Yeah, so when we will prove the, the second point, which is actually based on this. But maybe um, also uh, one more thing, I, I prepared a picture, this, this picture is, is uh, from Wikipedia. Uh, so, so I'm from Wikipedia and so, so basically what, what, what this, this thing is, this is uh, approximation of the, of the sine function using using um, different degrees uh, of the of the Taylor's polynomial so maybe you know that the, the sine function is uh, approx sine of x can be approximated the Taylor polynomial if you, if you do the, the derivations is something like um, x over 1 factorial minus x cube over 3 factorial plus x to 5 over 5 factorial plus minus sorry minus x to 7 minus 7 factorial and so on also the thing is like you have only only odd odd powers plus alternating signals uh, yeah so 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 basically or signs of signal signs, so uh, sorry, signs of, of the of the of the thing. So so it's alternating like this. So so basically, you can take a look how how the f how the f uh, function is working. So so the first degree polynomial is basically x. So maybe you know this this famous thing that sine of x over x. If you limit this thing, you will get to you will get to one, and this is exactly the thing. That very close around it, these two things are behaving. Um, pretty much the same. Yeah, so you have really the line and it's not so bad around here. Yeah, and then, then you take this uh, this uh, this uh, x minus x cube over three factorial this green one and it's even better better around here. Right? You can see this see it here. And then, then you can take the blue one which is the, the uh, degree five and then you can take the yellow one and the degree six and so on and so on and you will get much much better and better approximations. So I think this, this thing here is already degree thirteen and you can see it's pretty much copying the whole uh, function, you don't see a difference. Now so we could actually uh, use the use the um, Cauchy's mean theorem to to derive something something about how how good approximation is so let's say uh, this this thirteen. Okay, so so we can see that the Taylor polynomial is is not only nice nice theoretically uh, like that you can basically have have some approximations of of this type. Some like nested, nested uh, polynomial approximations are getting better and better, but also it's nice from the practical point of view because you can finally compute some things. Uh, you can you can solve many problems using Taylor's polynomial. Also, when you, when you do some computations, it's very useful because basically you can when you want to compare two functions. Let's say let's say I have like limit of of this f of x over g of x so the only thing uh, as x is going to something the only thing i need is to take towers polynomial of this and of this of, of high enough degree then some of the things will cancel out and then i will get something which is probably distinct and when i discover that something is distinct and one of the things is going to win and it's going to go to infinity or something like that okay so um so yeah, basically, basically, it's even even useful useful for for computations. Okay, so 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 basically, we have we have this this Lopitaus theorem, and we are going to use it. So the statement number one, we just need to show that limit of this remainder of of the Taylor's polynomial at uh, point x as x is tending to zero compared to x minus a to k is going to, to disappear it's, it's zero yeah so first of all what uh, we will we will take a look at this i, I will i will plug there the the original uh, the origin of uh, like i will write the remainder exactly is the value f of x minus Taylor's polynomial of degree k at x minus x minus a to k. And now 
I know that this thing is, is going to zero, so I can I can derive it. But the question is also whether this thing is going to zero. So we we will show that this thing is also going to disappear. And then we can derive it using Wapital's theorem. Now we will actually use Wapital's theorem uh, repeatedly several times, and in the end we will we will have we will have the uh, very nice formula which is already easy to work with. So so first of all. Let's take um, pk of x. Now once again, it's, it's f of um, f of a plus f prime of a times x minus a plus f double prime of a times x minus a squared over two factorial two f k derivation of a x minus a two k over k factorial and now basically what, what we will take a look we will take a look how does the elf derivation of, of this this thing work so what's happening all this a, a stuff here are just constants so we don't care about them and then we have always this this thing x minus a to something so we have x minus a to some power m over m factorial now we derive this l times and what will happen is that this thing and we derive it l times then basically this this um, this x minus a if, if you do, uh, do like the, the chain rule you do derivation inside and this x minus a is going to stay one so so basically what will, what will happen is that x minus a will decrease the power to, to m minus l and then always like the m is going to out and n minus one is going to out and then so on so it will it will cancel out with part of this m factorial and what, what is staying there is m minus l factorial this is a very nice formula so what we will get is that first we have um, like first first l, l l things are going to disappear completely. Uh, l, l first yeah first l terms and then then the next the friend the first non-zero term which is not not uh, destroyed by the derivation is f l derivation times x minus a to zero over um, over L factorial minus uh, L minus L factorial, so one. Then plus F L plus one times uh, yeah. This is always around eight. A uh, this is quite quite messy already, but <laughs> it's really, really a simple computation. This is no nothing nothing very smart. So then then what we hope we will get is x minus a to one over one factorial and so on to um, up to to f to um, and now what we have f to k times x minus a to k minus l over k minus l factorial okay so we have stuff like this so now what will happen if s x is tending to a? So here we have f a. S is tending to f a minus value of this polynomial s it's tending to a. But if x is tending to a, all these things are going to disappear, and the only thing remaining is f a times. Uh, Basically, basically f f uh, yeah, f a here. But if you if you do derivations like k k derivation, you will always get like here. Um, yeah, so so basically we can derive that this is this is going to zero. So we can apply apply. Uh, right, this is zero over zero. So we can apply apply basically uh, basically Opital's rule. And um, we will get the derivations here, and again, the derivation has the property, and we can we can basically uh, apply the Wapital's rule k minus one times. Okay, so so we will so let me, let me write it again. So x going to a 
f of x minus uh, b of x over x minus a to k is according to Wapital's rule k minus 1 1 times applied applied on this is equal to derivative of, of this fx minus bx to according to, to x uh, k minus 1 times over over this thing here which is basically what which is uh, I'm doing it is still there uh, this is uh, k minus 1 factorial uh, sorry k factorial not k minus 1 because we derive from the top so k times going k minus 1 k minus 2 and so on k factorial times x minus a okay so let's uh, take a look what what is this thing so first of all what so uh, I will let's we can run one over k factorial times the limit of, of x going to a so we have first of all we have k minus 1 derivative of x minus p k minus 1 derivative of x and this is still pk over x minus a so let's take a look at our formula so what will basically happen is that all the all the things will disappear except the last two which are so so this this thing here is um, f of k minus 1 at point a plus uh, so this is this thing plus this thing which is f f2k at point a times x minus x minus a over one factorial but we already had, had this before because because what what basically will happen is that we we will split the thing in half so so uh, we will split it in half like this so we have we have like minus here so we will split it in half and the first part the first part is i will forget about the k factorial because uh, this this thing is going to disappear anyway so f2 k minus 1 of x minus f2 k, uh, k minus 1 derivative of a over x minus a this is definition of, uh, of k derivative so this is exactly equal to k derivative at, at point a minus limit x going to, to a f2 f k derivative at point a times x over x minus a over x minus a so this is one again and this is this is a constant so minus f k derivative on point a which is zero yeah and this this uh, concludes the proof of of statement number one so really if you if i if i can go go slightly slightly back you maybe remember uh this this thing here the approach is completely exactly the same it's none it's uh, there there is there is no difference from from what happened so basically just yes, uh, you either apply the, the Wapital's rule several times or you can you can basically use uh, use uh, derivatives and uh, like inductions and, and stuff like this okay yeah so so now we are finished with uh, statement number one and for the statement number two we will use uh, Cauchy's uh, mean value theorem so uh, let me recall it from from the last time so it says okay so suppose that I have a function defined at point at uh, let's say um, a function which is which is continuous on, on the course interval and differentiable inside and um, basically I have I have two functions actually I have function f f sorry 
F and uh, G like this. And uh, so what we know that there exists some nice point C such that um, inside of, of A and X such that F derivative at this nice point over G derivative at the side point. So the ratio of the derivatives is equal to to f of x minus f of a over g of x minus g of a. So this is this thing is is equal equal to equal to this. Yeah. So uh, so this this is some kind of generalization of the mean value theorem where the g was was equal to 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 basically linear function or uh, to a constant function actually and. Uh, yeah, basically, basically we can we can work with that. So what so what will happen in our case that this function g will be something simple, and um, yeah, uh, maybe maybe to to not mess up let me let me denote them by by capital letters. Okay, so this function g is something simple. Simple and f uh, somehow gives uh, divorce uh, polynomial or uh, uh, remainder actually of, of that. So, so first let me let me choose uh, value of f and f of uh, t is uh, actually the value of divorce polynomial at point. X, which is made around point T. And this is somehow somehow crazy crazy thing at the first the first um, look, but it's it's not so difficult. So so basically, you have your function f of t plus f prime of t times um, x minus uh, t over one factorial plus um, f double prime of t times x minus t squared over 2 factorial, so on, so on, to, to the k power f, k derivative, x mm, at point t, x minus t to k over k factorial. So we have this, this thing here, which uh, really what, 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 what it means is that, um, sorry for this, Okay, so what 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 it really means is that we will take Taiwan around t, yeah, and the function is uh, for different t's. T values, uh, of course, to uh, we can't do this for for every function, so we will need some some assumptions on the. On the function, so we will we will need that uh, basically, uh, if I recall it correctly, then uh, um, let me just do just to check. Yeah, so we will need that the function is uh, k plus one times uh, differentiable. Inside the open interval a to x, and uh, it's uh, basically con um, and the the k derivative is is continuous is continuous inside of this of this closed uh, closed uh, interval a to x. So these these are assumptions on f. Fx, um, but um, and the only reason is because uh, we would, uh, but uh, yeah, we, we actually don't need this. We need only k times differentiable because uh, yeah. Uh, sorry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. We we will need we will need uh, k plus one. Uh, 
Yeah, so so because like the 